As a healthcare provider, you care about measuring your patient's cardiovascular risk. And you use conventional lipid panels to do that. In this quick video, we'll discuss a better option. But first, let's take a quick step back. ApoB lipoproteins are particles made up of varying amounts of triglycerides and cholesterol, most of which is cholesterol ester. There are five different classes of them, including chylomicrons, chylomicron remnants, VLDL, LDL, and LPA particles. Atherosclerosis happens when ApoB lipoproteins enter the arterial wall and, instead of exiting through the lymphatics and returning to the circulation, they get trapped. To measure a patient's cardiovascular risk, we need to estimate the number of atherogenic particles in the lumen of the artery because that's the major determinant of the number of ApoB particles that will be trapped in the arterial wall. All classes of ApoB are atherogenic, except for chylomicrons, which are too large to enter. How do we estimate the number of atherogenic ApoB particles in the lumen? Typically, we use conventional lipid panels. We use the mass of LDLC to estimate the number of lipid particles, and the mass of triglycerides to estimate the number of VLDL particles. So, if the mass of LDLC is low, we assume that there's a low number of LDL particles and a low cardiovascular risk. And if the mass of LDLC is high, we assume that there's a high number of LDL particles and a high cardiovascular risk. And we do the same thing with triglycerides and VLDL particles. The problem with this approach is that ApoB particles vary in size meaning that a given mass of LDLC or triglycerides can come from a small number of large particles or from a larger number of smaller particles. And here's an important point. While larger particles deposit more cholesterol into the arterial wall, they're less likely to get trapped. Smaller particles have less cholesterol, but they are more likely to become trapped. Why is that important? Because your patient's conventional lipid panel could show you a normal LDLC mass, and you could decide that they present a low cardiovascular risk, even if they have a large number of very small LDL particles in the lumen of their arteries, which could get trapped in the arterial wall. Or conversely, their conventional lipid panel could show a high mass of LDLC, and you could conclude that your patient presents a high cardiovascular risk even if they have a smaller number of large LDL particles, which are less likely to get trapped in the arterial wall. And the same risk of error holds when we're looking at the mass of triglycerides to estimate the number of VLDL particles in the lumen. It comes down to this. The most accurate way to estimate the number of atherogenic particles that could get trapped in the arterial wall is not the mass of triglycerides or cholesterol in the lumen, but the total number of ApoB lipoprotein particles in the lumen. The more particles there are in the lumen, the more particles are likely to be trapped in the artery wall. And can that be measured? Yes. Plasma ApoB can be measured rapidly and accurately using standardized automated tests that don't require patient fasting. And because each ApoB lipoprotein particle, regardless of its size, always has one molecule of ApoB, plasma ApoB is the total number of all ApoB lipoprotein particles. Now, of course, that number will include all classes of ApoB lipoprotein particles, but the vast majority of them will be LDL and VLDL particles, which are equally atherogenic. So it's no surprise that prospective observational studies, Mendelian randomization analyses, randomized clinical trials, discordance analyses, and a series of other studies have all shown clearly that ApoB is a more accurate measure of cardiovascular risk than triglycerides, LDLC, or even non-HDLC. And ApoB is also a more accurate marker of the adequacy of lipid-lowering therapy. There are two special cases when ApoB will not suffice. These include dysbeta-lipoproteinemia and hyperchylomicronemia. These cases are very rare and are best managed by lipid specialists. In the next video, we'll discuss how to use ApoB in clinical care for both diagnosis and for treatment.